that in my judgment, Daesh is responsible for genocide against groups in areas under its control, including Yazidis, Christians, and Shia Muslims. Next on Newsmax Prime, John Kerry finally admits the obvious, thanks in part to you. Johnny Moore joins us again on what more needs to be done. Also ahead, more evidence that Obamacare is proving hazardous to your financial health. What steps can you take to prevent further wounds to your wallet? Plus, Armstrong Williams on the advice he's given Dr. Ben Carson. What went wrong and what went right? Newsmax Prime starts right now. Good evening and welcome to Newsmax Prime. I'm J.D. Hayworth of Prime Interest Tonight, calling it what it is, finally. Secretary of State John Kerry waits until the last nanosecond of the 11th hour to follow what was a unanimous resolution in the House of Representatives that ISIS is conducting genocide against Christians. Here's more from Secretary Kerry. Daesh is genocidal by self-proclamation, by ideology, and by actions in what it says, what it believes, and what it does. Daesh is also responsible for crimes against humanity and ethnic cleansing directed at these same groups and in some cases also against Sunni Muslims, Kurds, and other minorities. For more on this story, we're pleased to be joined again by the man who has been fighting for our nation to declare what ISIS is doing to Christians in the Middle East, Johnny Moore. Of course, Johnny was just with us last night. You'll recall he's president of the Kairos Company, and he joins us again via Skype. Johnny, we appreciate your time, and what a difference 24 hours makes, huh? I was totally shocked. The whole world was shocked. I mean, yesterday on this program, we were asking if, if John Kerry was going to be a genocide denier. And I think he heard it, by the way, because there was a lot of pressure inside the State Department, pressure inside the White House to get him to delay, to delay, to delay, to not make this decision. But last night on this program, we said, does John Kerry want to go down in history as a genocide denier? And, and apparently he doesn't because he, he made the decision. He made the declaration. But, J.D., it's not the end of the story. We can't let them just do some big PR exercise to get us off their back. And I want to discuss that in just a second. But again, the whole timing of this, as I understand it, earlier in the week, that unanimous House vote surprised the administration. But, you know, Johnny, there's something else at work, and you touched on it. So many people who watch this telecast have weighed in, signing petitions, sending emails. Do you think it was that grassroots reaction that made the difference? Of course it was. I mean, this is the United States of America. And, and by the way, this isn't the first time we've seen this with, with Newsmax. I mean, you remember a few months ago, when the State Department, the same actor, denied a visa to Sister Diana, and this audience went wild. And, and this is the beauty of living in this country. When the people raise their voice, change happens. So, so for all of the partisanship and all of the corruption and all the problems we complain about and are concerned about, America is still a country where when we raise our voice, the will of the people has to be heard. And we made it impossible for John Kerry to make a different decision. So the decision has been announced, but is it your suspicion now that it's going to be won and done, that now this declaration has been made, the secretary is going to say, well, this designation alone is sufficient? Well, you know, I, I actually think John Kerry exhibited some moral courage in this because he stood against advisors in order to make this decision. But if you if you read the Associated Press report that leaked it out early this morning, an unnamed source at the State Department said this, though, does not mean we have to take any specific action. And so here's what the State Department is going to do. Oh, you know, let Secretary go out there and say his genocide thing. Let Congress vote unanimously. Yet let the EU Parliament do it. They did it too. Let Secretary Hillary Clinton do it. She's declared it's genocide. All the Republicans, everybody says it's genocide. But by the way, guys, this doesn't mean we have to do anything. And that's where we have to keep the pressure on because these guys would love for us to get off their back to say, oh, you know, you did it. But the truth is, is that the people on Capitol Hill right now that think the declaration is all that's needed and henceforth, you know, they, they will they will expect us all to go away and they'll just quietly do nothing. And I'll tell you, I'm not sure if that isn't worse than just not declaring a genocide at all, because now we have an admission. 
this State Department, this government, Democrats and Republicans in a nonpartisan way have called this what it is, genocide. And now there is a moral imperative to act. Whatever the legal opinion is of whatever State Department lawyer that was standing against this to begin with is, there is a moral imperative to act. And if they choose not to act, then it's even a worse situation because they will have used this sacrosanct term of genocide, the crime of crimes, as a PR exercise to get the people off of their back and the people who are affected will continue to suffer. And so now is not the time to take the pressure off. We need to keep the pressure on and demand specific action be taken in response to this genocide declaration. And this audience will do so, Johnny, but if you had to prioritize what comes next, what is the one thing that needs to follow this declaration? Well, there are, there are a few things. The first thing is today, earlier today, Senator Tom Cotton on the House floor gave a speech and introduced a Senate bill, the Religious Persecution Intervention Act, that would prioritize Christians and religious minorities in our resettlement program, in particular Christians. And so we need to support legislative actions like that. Number two, we need to make sure the United States government and the legislative and executive branches make specific moves in order to protect, provide security for these religious minorities and set up safe zones where they can. Number three, we need to demand that our, our decisions with regard to, the, to humanitarian assistance are in direct response to the particular threat against religious minorities. It is not immoral to provide special assistance to Christians in the Middle East who are facing a special threat. We, we, can't, we can't allow them to pull us into this 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 place and, again where we're accused of demagoguery and johnny we will continue to stay in touch with you for now you have our thanks and again the website is we stand with them dot com for more information again john thanks very much for your time thanks for having me.